Hello everybody and welcome back to Dad Got This. And today we are gonna be doing our visual quick start guide for the Ninja Woodfire Pro XL Connect. Let's get connected. We're gonna play some Connect 4. Connect the dots? I don't know. I'm gonna connect with this thing, figure out how to use it, and then I'm gonna teach you how to do it. Now I've done one of these quick start guides for the regular Ninja Woodfire. It's not a Pro Connect. It's not the XL version just the regular wood fire. A lot of the stuff in here is gonna be very similar to that, but this one has a whole lot of extra features with the Wi-Fi Connect and the app feature that really ups the ante and makes this one a lot more useful and fun for a guy who likes gadgets like me. It's also much bigger and lets you cook much more on it than the regular Ninja wood fire. It's like 30% larger cooking area and it has more height so you can do up to like a 12 pound turkey, I believe they claim, and a 10 pound rib roast. You can get a lot of food in this little sucker, but that doesn't matter if you don't know how to use it. Now, when you unbox your grill, you should have one of these in it. It is a quick start and recipe guide. Hold on to it or do like I do and go to the Ninja website and download yourself a copy onto your tablet or your phone. That way you don't have to worry about losing that book you're always gonna have your device with you. And this is the exact same information that's in that book, but it's handy and easily accessible. Let's start with the basics. What is this and what does it do? Mainly, and I think the main reason that most people buy it is, it is an electric outdoor smoker. It's a little tiny pellet grill. It allows you to add smoky flavor to your food without having to build a fire or maintain any of that stuff. And you can use it just about anywhere you can get electricity to it. Now. That's not all it does. It has a whole bunch of other features and we're gonna go over those. So what features does it have? It lets you smoke, lets you air crisp, which is air fry. It lets you bake, roast, dehydrate, and broil. I will fully admit, I have almost never used the bake, roast, and broil features on this unit or on my old unit. I pretty much either am smoking, air crisping, or I will use the dehydrator every once in a while to make some jerky. Let's go over the parts and pieces and what this thing is and how to use it. This is your main unit. You're gonna get this when you purchase it. Step one, after you've unboxed your unit and got everything ready, how do we get power to it? It comes with about a four foot power cord, but since it kind of tucks under the unit, you really don't get four feet of actual usage where you're at. It's really only good for like a foot to two foot. It comes with a little breaker on it that'll protect it from surges. So this is what you are gonna plug in. In most cases, I'm gonna bet that most of you are like me and you're gonna use an extension cord to run to this. A question I got asked a whole lot is, what kind of extension cord should I use? And a viewer gave me a really great tip to explain how to pick a good extension cord for this unit. Always pick an extension cord that is as thick or thicker than the cord that is on the appliance you are plugging in. So here's our cord, and here's my nice beefy outdoor extension cord. I just purchased these in my local Home Depot or Lowe's. They are an outdoor rated extension cord. You're gonna have to find one that has the three prong. And we're just gonna go ahead and plug that right in. And that's gonna get us our initial power. Now, if you end up not having any power to your unit after cooking for a while, or it just seems to stop working, check this, it's a, it's a breaker. It's got a reset button. You'll see right now it's green. If it ever goes red, you just hit the button to reset it and it'll go back. Power trips can happen for all kinds of reasons. Now, if that's not tripped, check if you have a GFI outlet. Most of the outlets you plug things into outdoors are what's called GFI protected. They just have a little extra circuit breaker in them, and it's usually on the outlet or it's on an outlet somewhere inside your house because they'll link them together and see if that tripped. If that hasn't tripped, check your circuit breaker. If your circuit breaker hasn't tripped and you still don't have power, then something's gone really wrong. All right, now that we know how to power it, Let's open it up and see what's actually inside it. This is the ProConnex air fry basket. This basket is what you're gonna use anytime you are air frying or air crisping some food. This is a little bit different than the one that came on the regular wood fire. That one used to be like a black non-stick metal and it was a little bit different design. I, they've changed to this design and honestly, this one's been fine. It's been nice and easy to clean. You can see it's actually brand new looking. I've only used it like once. I don't do a whole lot of air crisping on these. I mainly use this as a smoker. But this is what you're gonna go ahead and put your food in if you're going to be using the air fry feature. This is your grill grate. As you can see, it just sits right on top in the unit. No clips or anything like that. This is a nice heavy duty cast iron 
non-stick coated grill grate. These things are fantastically easy to clean. I mean, they will look terrible after you're done cooking. Hit them with some warm, soapy water, let them soak for a little bit with some detergent on them, and scrub them down with a brush. I use a specific brush only for cleaning grill stuff because it's gonna stain your brush. So I have a grill brush, I clean these down, and they come out perfect. No need to throw them in the dishwasher. I do not think you can throw them in the dishwasher. It will affect the coating. Um, I don't do it, so that's my recommendation. Just hit them with a scrub brush, warm soapy water. These things will come out nice and clean. You can see it's got a little hole back here. That's how the grease drains in the unit. So it, they just sit in there like that. In the back of the unit here is your drip pan. This has a nice big drip pan. It's metal. Now in the package that I got, they sent me one of these drip pan liners. It just sits in here and it's really nice. I used to make my own little drip pan liner using tin foil, but now I have one here that I can just easily swap out when it gets bad. I'll start probably going to the tin foil again, or maybe I'll buy some of these. They're not that expensive. This just catches all the grease that runs out of that little hole so it doesn't make a huge mess. Please do not forget to put this in and try not to leave grease in here. I kind of stained my old one. Not that it matters, it's just a grease pan, but um, it will kind of stain if you just let stuff sit in it. And it just slides right into a slot in the back here. You enjoying this video? Well, there's a few simple things you can do to help me out. One, you could subscribe if you're not already. Two, you could give the video a like and hit that bell, all right? And then the most important feature in my opinion is by pulling this little handle on the side, you will get access to your smoker box. This is really tiny. I believe they say it holds like a half a cup of pellets, but those half a cup of pellets generally will last you between 45 minutes and an hour, depending on the setting, the humidity, your kind of pellets. It really ranges on how long you're gonna get out of your pellets, but this is your smoker box. Now, I have noticed they use the same smoker box in pretty much all of their wood fire grills. The small one, the big one, the outdoor grill, it looks to be the exact same one. It just slots right in here and goes like that. I love the little pull out handle. It makes it so much easier. The old one was a, um, you had to like pull it up. There was a door on top, you had to pull it up and fill. It was a lot harder to fill. This one, much easier to fill. And that is the basics of what you get when you order your Ninja Wood Fire Grill. Now there are some accessories, we'll go over that later, that you can get, that I do suggest you get, one of them in particular. But that's what you get when you order your grill. Now you might get some different stuff when you order your grill. They sell packages and stuff depending on if you buy it from Ninja directly or you buy it in other places. But if you buy your Ninja Wood Fire Grill and you don't have at least a grill plate, a smoker box, and a fry basket, you need to contact them because you didn't get everything you were supposed to. Let's start going over the features and what each cook method does and kind of when you would use it. The first cook method on here listed is grill. And basically that lets you treat this as a grill. It is going to heat up this grill plate and pretty much that's it. It doesn't really circulate the air that much. It's not a convection cooking method. It is really just direct heat cooking with the bottom plate. Think of using a propane grill. All the heat comes in the bottom, you're kind of flipping, you're doing steaks, you're doing chickens, pork chops, that kind of stuff. Directly on the grill grate, heat from the bottom. The grill setting is the only setting that will allow you to actually to continue to cook with the lid open. If you try to cook with the lid open in any of the other features, it is gonna give you a warning and tell you to shut the lid. That's just the way it is. We'll go over the buttons on the front here. This is your power button. This is your mode select button. This is the button you're gonna hit to decide whether you wanna be using the smoker or not. They call it the wood fire flavor button. That just means are you gonna light the pellets and add smoke or not? These are both buttons to adjust time and temperature. This is your dial to do all of your adjustments with. You have a start stop button and this is a probe select button because this has built-in temperature probes. Very, very cool. Now, we're gonna go ahead and hit power and it's going to say hello. As you can see, the little light here is lit up by grill. So that's gonna say we are in the grill setting. We can change settings like we can turn on the wood fire flavor if we want. 
Now that's going to have to go through a preheat cycle after you hit start to actually start igniting the pellets and adding the smoke. Yeah. We can change our temp. You've got low, medium, and high. Those are your three settings in grill. Now you can also change your time. Let's say I want to grill something for, I don't know, 25, 26, 30 minutes. You can pick that. Now, if I'm using a temp, I can select what kind of food I am using. Yeah, beef, chicken, pork, fish, manual. Here is where my probes are stored. If I plug a probe in, you'll see your probes are color coordinated. There's a gray one and a black one. On the side, there is a gray and a black button. That way it lets you know which one is probe one and which one is probe two. If I plug my probe in, and we'll just say beef, you can see it's blinking that it knows that probe two is plugged in. We're gonna turn wood fire off. And if we hit start, it's gonna start its preheat cycle. Pretty simple. We'll go more in depth into the probe a little bit later. And if you wanna stop, you can hit end. Now, it's going to give you a flip warning halfway through whatever time you select. So if you select 10 minutes in five minutes, it's gonna just automatically tell you to flip. You really can't adjust that or change that. Just let it tell you to flip, wait a while, it'll go away. It's annoying, it annoys me. I just wanna to know to flip my food. I'll flip my food when I wanna flip my food, but that's just something it does. Don't worry, it'll eventually go away and the countdown will restart. And that's it, that's how you use the grill setting. Really simple. The next feature, and in my opinion, the most important feature is the smoker setting. That's where I think most people are gonna use this most of the time. You set it to smoker, you smoke some amazing food, some briskets, some ribs. I've done all kinds of fun foods on here. Check my playlist on the Ninja Wood Fire Grill. All of those recipes will work in here and they're fantastic. Now, set your food to smoker and this is where the magic happens. We're gonna open our little pellet hopper. You're gonna need to get some pellets. Now they'll send you a couple of little bags of pellets when you buy your wood fire grill most of the time. A couple of just little sample bags. This is the Ninja Wood Fire blend. This is a blend of cherry, maple, and oak. But I use, most of the time I've been using these Kona pellets. They say you need to use Ninja Wood Fire brand pellets all over the box, everywhere. Now I've done a video where I tested a whole bunch of different pellets in the other Ninja Wood Fire. And go check that video out. Shocker, you can use other pellets. I really like these Kona brand pellets. You can get a three pack of them in a couple different flavors for not too bad. Now, it, compared to buying a big giant jumbo bag that you would buy if you had a full size smoker, yes, they seem expensive. But when you're only using a half a cup of pellets on each cook, buying a 50 pound bag of pellets, even though it is really cheap, it's kind of wasteful. You're never gonna go through it. You're gonna have pellets for the rest of your life. All you need to do is you can either use their little scooper or I just take the, the whole thing when it's cold for the first time. And fill up the hopper with pellets. Like I said, it's about a half a cup of pellets. Now, I do this every time. I know it probably does nothing. I call it the dad shake. I just give the pellets a little shake. I used to say that I felt like it was giving some separation around the pellets and allowing air, but it was pointed out to me that I'm actually not doing that. What I'm really doing is I'm actually just kind of compacting them and letting them settle a little bit more. I don't know what it is about it, but by doing the dad shake, I have never had a problem igniting my pellets with any kind of pellets that I have put in this unit. So I do it every time, dad shake. We're gonna go ahead and slide it right in there like that, real simple, and now you are ready for smoking. We'll go to the front and we'll do some settings. We're gonna hit our power button. We're gonna hit mode till it goes to smoker. And now you can see when I hit smoker, it automatically for me turned on the wood fire flavor button. I don't have to hit it. The way you know if you are smoking and going to be using the pellets is if this flame is lit up, then you will be using your pellets. You can't not use the pellets. You're smoking, that's the whole point. And now this is super cool. You can go all the way down what they call cold smoke. So you can go as low as 105 degrees, which is the cold smoke feature, 40 degrees Celsius, 
and up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius in the smoker setting. You can still use a probe if you would like. Now the easiest way to use the rest of this and do all your settings is to use the app, which we will get into later. Once everything is set, let's say this was in here and you're ready to smoke, you would just go ahead and hit your start button. It's gonna say IGN, that means it is igniting the pellets. It'll go through a whole preheat setup and then you'll be ready to smoke. It'll say add food. We're gonna hit stop for right now because we're not gonna do that just yet. At the end of the video, make sure you stay to the end. We are gonna do a smoked chicken breast on here that is gonna come out tender, juicy, flavorful, and delicious. And that's gonna be our, our cook test so you can see how it actually works and cooks in the smoking feature, which is where I think most of you guys are gonna use this. The next cooking feature you get is air crisp. It's air fry. This is an outdoor air fryer and that is wonderful. Doing your air frying outside is really, really nice. It works exactly the same as any air fryer you would ever use. For this, you are gonna put all your food in your air fry basket. So we'll open up our grill. We'll throw our air fry basket in there. We'll turn it on. Air Crisp will let you cook from 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 148 degrees Celsius all the way up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius. As you can see, when you first turn on Air Crisp, you do not get the wood fire flame. They don't default it to that. We have to hit the button. Once we hit the button, now when we start everything up, we are going to get pellets and smoke and smoke flavor. And that's the best part about this. You've got your probes, same as everything else. Everything else works the same in this feature. We're just Air Crisping. So if we turn on start, it doesn't like this. It says, no, close the lid. That's why I told you, the only one you're allowed to cook with the lid open is grill. It's gonna go through its IGN, it's gonna start, preheat, everything. This is my second most used mode. I will air crisp a lot of things with the smoke. Sometimes I don't wanna cook low and slow, but I still wanna add a little bit of smoky flavor. So I will throw it on air crisp, I'll throw some pellets in there, I'll let it go and it works really, really well to get some quick, delicious and flavorful food out there with some smoke flavor. Now let's talk about the preheat times. The preheat times on this thing can range anywhere from like six minutes to up to almost 25 or even 30 minutes. Sometimes when you are preheating the very first time to a high temperature, it can take a while. So please give yourself at least 30 minutes if you're gonna be doing something at a high temperature to let it preheat, ignite, and go through its whole thing. They quote between like six and 25 minutes for most of their different cook types in here, but I've had it go up to 30. Just all depends on your environmental around what the temperature is outside, all sorts of stuff, who knows. But just make sure you give yourself enough time to wait for this thing to preheat and you're not standing there like ready to cook your food or something sitting on a cutting board ready to go in and then this thing's still sitting waiting to preheat. I've made that mistake. Let's move on from Air Crisp to our next cooking feature, roast. This is basically like baking in your oven. Nice little high heat, you can use the wood fire on it, works really well. Wood fire cooks from 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius all the way up to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius. I never used the roast feature, ever. Haven't used it once. <laughs> the next feature is bake. Bake is basically what it's saying. I, you can bake a cake in here, you could do that kind of stuff. I honestly don't know what the difference between roast and bake function-wise in this is. Bake cooks from 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius, all the way up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. Everything else works the same time, temp, probes. Oh, quick question for you. Why did the skeleton go to the barbecue? He wanted to get an extra rib. Never mind. Bad jokes aside, let's move on to our next cooking feature, broil. That is exactly what it sounds like. You can use this like a broiler. Top down heat only, really high heat. That is if you are just looking to crisp the top of something, works really great for fish. Anything you would use your broil setting on your oven for, you can do in here. As you can see, you cannot use wood fire on the broil setting. 
not allowed. You get a little uh -uh. as far as temp goes. As you can see, if I hit the temp setting and I try to change it, I can't. It won't let me. That's it. It won't let you do anything else other than full max heat and top down heat. That's it. No probes, no nothing else. 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 degrees Celsius is the max heat. That's as hot as this thing can go. I was hoping that when they came out with this one, they were gonna bump it up to 700. They did not. They reserved 700 degrees for the Ninja Woodfire outdoor oven. If you would like more information on that unit, I do have a series of videos on that. I'll link them down below. That is their pizza oven, wood-fired oven. It goes to a full 700 degrees. We are limited to the 500 degrees, 260 Celsius on this unit. We have one cook type to go over before we get into the really fun part, which is setting this up for its Wi-Fi connectivity and the app. That is dehydrate. You can use the wood fire setting. Now in dehydrate, it's gonna let me go all the way down to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 degrees Celsius to a max of 195 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius. And what dehydrate is going to do is exactly what it sounds like. That's how you make beef jerky and all that kind of fun stuff in here. You can use it with smoke. It cooks at a really low temperature for really long times, sucks all the moisture out of stuff, and you can make some awesome beef jerky. I have a video on making beef jerky in the smaller version of this, and it is fantastic. Now that we've gone through all of the basics, let's get into the really fun stuff because this thing will connect to your Wi-Fi and it comes with an app and you can control a bunch of extra stuff using your phone. I love that this thing is app connected and I can do all kinds of fun stuff with it on my cell phone. For the first time you use it, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and follow the instructions. We're gonna download the Ninja Pro Connect app. You're gonna get that either on the iOS app store or your Google Play store. I happen to use an iPhone, so mine came from the app store. Fire that up and we're gonna follow the instructions to go ahead and do our first setup. It's gonna ask you to create an account for Ninja. We'll do that. We're gonna ask you to register our item. Once we fill in all that information, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pair our unit to the app. It's really simple. You just go ahead and follow the instructions on the screen. We're gonna allow it to have Bluetooth connection. We're gonna select our grill. Boom, it connects. Give your grill a fun name if you want. Don't if you don't. It says get started. But then it asks us, let's pair it to Wi-Fi. You really wanna not skip this step. Once we have our unit all paired and ready to go and we're in our app, you should see a screen that looks like this. It's gonna give you all your little settings for your time cooks, your thermometers, turn wood fire on and off. Anything you can do on the unit, you can control with your app. And that's fantastic. And because we paired this to the Wi-Fi of our house, we can control it from anywhere. And that makes it amazing. You could leave the house, change the temperature, check on your food, do all kinds of stuff. Since we are plugged up and ready to go, let's take a look at some of the features we can do. We can go ahead and change it from smoker to air crisp, to roast, bake, broil. We can change the cook type. We can do our whole cook setup from the phone without actually having to be at the front of the unit. So we're gonna go ahead, since we're gonna do our smoker test with some smoked chicken breast. We're gonna set it for smoker. And you can see it automatically turned on wood fire. You can't turn off wood fire on the smoker setting. Now we're gonna to get to go ahead and pick a cook time. So for chicken breast, boneless, skinless chicken breast should be about an hour to two hours depending on the thickness. So we're gonna pick two hours and we're gonna do ours at 250 degrees and we're gonna hit save changes now they have this cool little do you want help you can hit that and go to cooking charts we can say okay I want poultry and they have a couple of items here chicken duck thing tur turkey legs unfortunately they do not have chicken breast we're gonna keep it with our two hours at 250 degrees we can go to our thermometer tab and we can cook by thermometer. Let's turn on thermometer number one. I have a target temp of 165 degrees. That is cooked chicken. And it'll give me a warning when my target temp reaches 165 degrees. I love that. 
Now, you have two independent thermometers. So let's say I wanted to set, I'm cooking two different items. One's bigger, one's smaller. I can set the probe into different ones. I can set them for different temperatures. Very versatile. We have already loaded this with some pellets. Just exploring the app, they have a timed cook charts where you can scroll through and you can see all different kinds of stuff. Chicken, grill, beef, different like recipes. So let's say if we were doing a fresh marinated New York strip, it kind of gives you everything you need to know on how to cook it on this unit. Really cool. You can filter it by the mode, the time, the food, all kinds of stuff on there. I like that, that's really cool. You can check your settings of your appliance. It'll tell you your app version, your, serv your firmware, all that kind of stuff. Warranty. You can have more than one smoker in the app. Your account, all kinds of stuff. Now this one's really important. Go to settings and make sure you have cooking notifications push turned on. You want it to be able to send you notifications so when it gets close to being done or a temperature probe hits what it's going, you wanna be notified of that. If you don't turn that on, you're not gonna get any notifications. We're gonna go back to our cook, we're all set, and we are gonna hit start. It's gonna warn me to tell me that I wanna have my grill grate in and my grease tray in before it is safe to start. And that's it. It is done, it is preheating, and I love this. It gives me like a percentage countdown of the preheat function, and then when we're here, so right now we're on timed cook. Let's say I don't wanna to cook to time, I wanna to cook to a temperature. I can pick thermometer and tell it I wanna do chicken, cooked, save changes, and now it's gonna stop cooking when the chicken hits 165. I don't even need to be here to stop it, it'll tell me, but, Instead of just giving me a warning, hey, the chicken's done, it's gonna stop cooking when we hit 165. Speaking of chicken, let's prep some chicken. For this cook, we're gonna keep it super simple. We're just gonna use some boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Dry. For seasoning, we are gonna go with some of my go. This is basically a 50-50 granulated onion, granulated garlic. We're gonna hit that like that. A Little bit of sea salt. A Little bit of black pepper. Smoker's already up to temp. We're gonna go with our first probe. And you really wanna insert it into the thickest part of your chicken. Make sure you're all the way in there. No probe is sticking out. And just for funsies, we will insert probe number two. Close it off, and that's it. Now we wait. No flipping needed on these. We're just gonna let them go till they hit 165 internal temp. And the app goes ahead and tells me that and shuts off the cooking. It doesn't care about time. It is literally cooked till the probe says 165. Believe it or not, these are almost done. They are reading in the high 150s, almost 160 just about everywhere. Dead to the middle, almost 160. So we'll let these go for a little bit longer. One thing I hate to do is to overcook chicken. Now it just shut off because it said, uh-uh, we hit 165. We're done. Let's take a look at these things. Which works out pretty well for me because it's starting to rain a little bit. Now, your hands might not be as dead to heat as mine and you might not be able to grab a hot chicken breast and just rip a probe out like that, but I can. We'll let these rest for five to 10 minutes. We'll cut in them. Always let your food that's been roasted or smoked rest. It's gonna let the juices redistribute. The juices will end up in your food, not on your cutting board. And the last thing we're gonna go over here today is an accessory, an accessory that I think you should pick up. This is the new Ninja grill and griddle plate. As you can see, half of it is flat top, half of it is the regular grill. So I can do some burgers, I can do some veggies, I can do some flat topping on here, all on this side, and I can still be doing a little bit of grilling over on this side. Pretty cool. They do offer a full flat top one. However, this is the one that they sent me, and I'm kind of interested in it. This way I don't have to continually swap between my grill and my griddle plate. I can kind of use this as my pretty much all the time plate, unless I'm doing some smoking or something like that. And then I'll just probably use the regular one, but this is super cool. I love making smash burgers on these things. And I'm so glad they came out with a flat top accessory for the bigger one. It was my favorite thing on the regular one other than smoking. So super cool. I'll throw links down for all the stuff in the description below. I have waited absolutely as long as I can 
I got rain coming. So let's go ahead and give this a taste-see, a look-see. Let's cut one open and see what they look like. That is a perfectly cooked, nice and juicy, I mean, I can squeeze juice out of that chicken. And that's breast. Slice a little bit from the middle, pick up some juices from our board. This is a fresh cutting board, not the one that I used the raw chicken on. We'll give that a taste. Mmm, so good. Tender, juicy, smoky flavor. This would go great in a salad, on some pasta, anything. In a sandwich, cold, hot, It'd be delicious. Look at that, look how nice and juicy that is. That grill and griddle plate goes for about 35 bucks. They do offer a full griddle one for about 40 bucks. So you have your option if you wanna go all griddle or grill and griddle. So that's gonna do it for our Ninja Woodfire Pro Connect XL Quick Start Guide. I hope that's gonna get you guys up and running and using your Ninja Woodfire Pro Connect XL. And if you're looking for things like recipes and what you can cook in it, please consider subscribing and following the channel. I do a lot of content with these items, but it's not all I do. I also have regular Instant Pot recipes. I do regular cooking recipes. I have another awesome different brand grill coming out. Whole bunch of stuff that I do on this channel. So if you're into cooking and food and grilling and all that kind of stuff, consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. I will also leave links down below for this unit, all the accessories, anything I talked about. They will be affiliate links. They will help me out if you purchase from them. It does help the channel out. I do appreciate it. If there's an active coupon for the Ninja, I will put that down in the description below. If any of the links stop working or something's going wrong, please send me a message, leave a comment. I will do my best to rectify the situation. Dad may be a pro and connected. Probably neither of those, but that doesn't do outros, so that's it. Bye.